Hey, hey, 420 MSP, we're back uh, with a familiar a familiar face with Luis, and we're joined by Chris. So, uh, gentlemen, thanks for carving out some time as we uh, continue to double-click down into the technology side of the cannabis supply chain. So, Chris, uh, we know you from the other side of the aisle in the SMB Nation community and some uh, endeavors you've been involved in. What are you doing now? What's your company? Why do we care in cannabis? Ah, uh, thanks, Harry. Great, great, great to be on, and always great to see you, Lewis, here as well. Um, so I work for a company called Deep Sentinel, and what we're basically doing now is we're working with MSPs that want to start to build a monthly recurring revenue stream doing physical security, as opposed to the um, you know long-standing kind of cyber play that they've had for a while. Yeah. Uh, our offering basically it's it's a camera-based security system that's designed to deter crime before it happens. So you set up motion-sensitive cameras around your property. Uh, anything that moves will trigger a live video stream to our hub. The hub is basically a small appliance that's running our secret sauce, which is an artificial intelligence engine. It'll filter out anything that is not of interest. And of interest in this case is people. And if the AI detects somebody that's doing something uh, that they shouldn't be doing, it streams that video straight to our live guard center, which is in California, where we get live humans putting eyes on the scene. Uh, they can determine whether it's, you know, totally innocuous or something that's not kosher going on. If they see anything suspicious, they have the ability to uh, speak with the person through the cameras as a two-way intercom. And they'll typically, you know, they'll identify themselves as security, if you've sent them security, if you have any business on the property. And then depending on how the conversation goes, it can escalate from there. Uh, typically, once people who are planning to do something wrong uh, realize that they're on camera being recorded and someone's talking to them, they typically take off. Yeah. Um, if things go sideways, uh, we have the ability to escalate two ways. We can hit a button and all the cameras will turn into a hundred plus decibel kind of klaxon noise, which is pretty effective. Yeah. And then the last thing, the ultimate thing is they hit a red button that dials 911 from the address that's being observed. And we get really good response time from the police because it's a live a visual confirmation of a crime in progress. It's not just an alarm going off. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. Uh, next question, then I want to hear the use case and what mm -hmm. your partner Luis is up to, but um, it seems like you can uh, support the entire supply chain from seed to sale, right? So the growers, the processors, and the dispensaries. Is that, is that right, that you're, you, you got everybody covered? Yeah, we can be used to cover just about any environment uh, from outdoor growing to uh, warehouses where they're storing, indoor grows, and we have several dispensaries that are customers as well. They seem to be a pretty prime target during especially this uh, this COVID era. Yeah. So, Luis, what's your story relative to uh, what Chris is doing? What's going on? Well, as you know, Harry, we've been doing surveillance for cannabis uh, operations for, you know, four or five years now. And, you know, the, the compliance part of it requires a lot of cameras, a lot of storage, all that stuff. But one of the things that really is, is problematic is all, all that storage is on prem. So we've had a few um, places that have been hit, uh, clients of ours, where the guys, you know, the bad guys come in, they know where the DDRs are. They just go get them, take them with them, along with whatever cash or you know edibles they want to take out, and suddenly you have no video of the crime being committed. Yeah. Um, and that's that's a concern, and you can't really stream that amount of, of video to a cloud storage. It's it's prohibitive. So what we're doing is we're wow. using Deep Sentinel to go to to our uh, clients, dispensaries, as well as um, uh, manufacturing facilities. Uh, and, and some grow operations and saying, hey, this is a way to augment your existing video uh, in a way that will prevent crime from happening, right? So you can put these cameras uh, at points of egress and ingress. So regardless of what happens with the other cameras, we have the video if we need it. We can call the cops, we can do all that sort of stuff. It's much more cost effective than uh, having guards uh, who more often than not fall asleep you know, do all the things that guards tend to do because they're not the highest paid dudes in, in, the, uh, yeah. in the supply chain, right? So yeah. um, this is like, you know, it's uh, for, the, for people that have ring, right, on your doorbell, this is kind of like ring for the cannabis industry. And, and uh, you know, we, we see applications outside of the, uh, of the cannabis industry as well, especially, you know, given that 
um, when all these lockdowns happened, there was a lot of people that uh, had facilities that they couldn't, you know, they had to pay people to sit in because they were afraid to leave them uh, empty uh, in case they, they got, uh, you know, vandalized. So this is a way to, to, to deal with that. It's pretty affordable, I, we think. And uh, we're talking to a, a bunch of people that uh, now that things are starting to, to loosen up, want to move forward with some of these projects. So we're, we're excited about using this as a way to augment what we're already doing in video surveillance. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, hey, final question. Um, so, uh, and we have the URL down below in the blog so people can go get more information. In fact, on both of you. <laughs> um, but it seems, Luis, that this is additive or supplemental to the compliance requirements of uh, video, you know, 60 cameras in a grow watching um, uh, a, a plant grow. That's not as exciting mm -hmm. from a crime point of view. So this is additive. Do you want to maybe draw out that distinction a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So the compliance piece, that doesn't go away. Um, we don't see Deep Sentinel as as part of the compliance component. We see it as part of the, the crime prevention component because um, as a good example, I think Chris alluded to, to it, we had uh, protests uh, in Monterey County like everybody has had across the country and several dispensaries closed down. And unlike um uh, oakland or la where you know those dispensaries were broken into and and people ransacked them you know the the ours ours weren't harmed but it got people to thinking the owners of those dispensaries that hey i i don't want to leave my place alone in case something happens but i also don't want to pay for somebody to stand around here um and run away when things get bad so what's what's the uh what's the alternative and so we, we're talking to them about deep sentinel as a way to um, you know, make sure that they're still secure, uh, invest in, in a few cameras outside, not to take away from the compliance piece, but really to, as a crime prevention piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Chris, final word. Sir, take us out with a couple of final thoughts. You bet. Uh, the first one, uh, I just want to reinforce a point that, that Lewis made, which was that um, in addition to the video being stored locally in the hub, it is streamed to our operations center and stored in the cloud. So in the case where a crime does happen, that we're unable to stop it. We have all that forensic video for the police, which is great. Now, the second thing, which I think is more important for the MSPs, which is how do you make money? Uh, this is a monthly recurring service. We sell it as a subscription model. Uh, there's a small upfront investment in the equipment, but after that, it's a monthly service fee for the monitoring. And uh, the, the partners keep 25% uh, of that monthly recurring fee for as long as the business is paying customers. So. Um, it's a nice new service to layer into your existing customer base, and it's also a nice uh, new conversation starter for uh, prospective managed service customers. There we go. All right. Well, thanks for uh, helping us build out our coverage, our story, and the, uh, the, the technology supply chain and the cannabis vertical. Um, mm -hmm. Gentlemen, keep it safe out there. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Harry. Thanks for having us on, Harry.